Uh, today's reading is going to be from chapter 17 of Revelation, and we're going to do verses 1 through 5. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality, and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. And he carried me away in, in the spirit into a wilderness. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, full of blasphemous names having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. And on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the, and of the abominations of the earth. Good evening, welcome to eCourse Community Bible Church, Wednesday night service. Let's bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord. Gracious Father, we thank you for this opportunity as we meet together. We, we began our, our uh, service this Wednesday in prayer, and so many prayers went up, and it did touch my heart. And then also, I was so grateful to be able to pray for certain ones that had called in and asked would you pray for this person? It just made me so aware of uh, the needs of, that we have, that we all have. Thank you for hearing our prayers and for the worship that we, that we had to worship our, our Heavenly Father. And now, gracious Father, we ask you to bless this study, Holy Spirit, to speak to our hearts, help us to understand, and to prepare ourselves as we leave this place uh, to be a witness and a testimony for you in these last days to the glory of God. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, always an exciting Bible study when we're in the book of Revelation, always. And we're in Revelation chapter 17. And Revelation chapter 17 is the first of two chapters that deals with um, Mystery Babylon. And so uh, we're going to be looking at what the Bible says, a little bit of introduction as far as Mystery Babylon. We've heard that word Babylon before. Um, you've read through the Bible. You've seen that it has been mentioned, I understand, about 290 times in the Bible. That's an important uh, name. Uh, not as uh, many times as uh, Jerusalem, but it's, it's a significant uh, uh, city and kingdom. So there are two aspects of Babylon being discussed in chapter 17 and 18. In chapter 17, it is spiritual. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, it is uh, religious Babylon. I don't want to say spiritual Babylon. Uh, it's religious Babylon. And then in chapter 18, it's political Babylon. So we'll be looking at both of them. We won't get to chapter 18 tonight, I'm sure. Now, Babylon, how far does that go back? We're thinking thousands of years, yes, but uh, it goes back beyond King Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel chapter 2 with his dream. Maybe we'll look at that um, because that's the head of gold of the statue of the dream that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had. But we go beyond that back to the Tower of Babel. And that was a time, if you remember, the Tower of Babel. This was uh, after... Noah's Ark, and uh, it had settled, and hundreds of few, uh, a couple hundred years later, uh, was uh, the community were uh, building a, a certain of the community were building a tower, and it was uh, an effort, a united effort by those to of the world to of the world's citizens to build a community yeah. apart from God unto themselves. And I want to read a little uh, passage from that, and it's found in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 4. Uh, we probably need to, or should understand when it's talking about Babylon, mystery Babylon, what's it talking about? In Genesis chapter 11 and verse 4, here's what it says. And then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to heaven so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered 
over the face of the earth, the whole earth. Well, that, isn't that interesting, just that one uh, uh, sentence? Notice the personal pro pronoun. Let us. Okay? And then two, build ourselves a tower that reaches to heaven. Now, i stop right there just for a moment. Uh, this was their intent to get to heaven. They're only apart from God's way. Does that sound oh boy. familiar? Yeah. How can we find paradise? How, how can man build paradise? How can we establish a millennium? Or how can we take this world where we want it to go? And that's what they were doing. Their intent was to get to heaven their own way apart from God's will. And they're building a tower. And so higher, and it was getting higher, and they were building. And you know, when I was a, a kid and I first read this, or a teenager and I first read this, I was thinking, that's kind of absurd. That sounds ridiculous. What do you mean, building a tower? You don't seem to know. You've got the, you know, the first atmosphere, and then you've got the stratosphere, and then beyond that, you've got the ionosphere. Excellent. <laughs> All right. How far are you going to get? And can you just imagine a tower that's going up like that? It's, it's ridiculous. But freaky. Well, anyways, uh, that's foolishness. And God looked down, and He certainly uh, was was holding them in derision. And then it goes on. It says that reaches into the heavens, so that we. There's another pronoun. It's us. It's ourselves. It's we. It's all about man, isn't it? Patting ourselves on the shoulder of mankind. And then it says, may make a name for ourselves. Okay? It keeps going, doesn't it? And then uh, the sixth one I want to point out is, otherwise we will be scattered. So what are they doing? They're having uh, a, uh, uh, a time together to proclaim that we can do better than God. We can we're going to do it without God. This is what always happens when men separate themselves from God. They seek glory and power for themselves. This is, was also the history of Satan. I want to bring this out because how in the world did Satan get where he was? He what? Began separating himself from God. You know, anytime any of us, and try to remember this, Anytime any of us separate ourselves from prayer time, we're distancing ourselves from God. If we don't pray in the morning, if we skip it, we think, well, you know, I'm so busy. Who are you set? What are you doing? You're separating yourself from God. What, what is prayer time? Prayer time is speaking and talking with our Heavenly Father. And there should be some intimacy there. There should be passion. There should be our crying. There should be our, our uh, praising, our thanking. And so that, I'm sure, in heaven, you try to explain how did say, get uh, uh, Lucifer, get uh, the light bearer, get separated from God. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Well... Here's what they were doing. They were seeking their own power for themselves. And I want to read from Isaiah 14, 13 about uh, Lucifer. Isaiah 14, 13. Let's look at the comparison. It's a direct comparison. Isaiah 14, 13. For thou, and that Satan, hast said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north, which is the place where God sits. The mounts of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will exalt myself in heaven. How did puny little man come to that place? It's possible Nimrod did in the time of the building of the Tower of Babel. And now we've got in our day the Antichrist. And those men that are gathering themselves together and patting themselves on the back and they are putting who out? God out. They're putting Him out. Can you see it? If you're a Christian, you can. Here are the thoughts of reaching heaven, not God's way, but their own way. 
They felt they didn't need God to rule over them. You know, uh, I don't like God's laws, they said. I would rather have my own desires fulfilled, they said. I mean, we're human beings. We can understand that if we lived in the flesh, we would want to fulfill the flesh. We have done that at times. Don't look at me that way, Doug. We all have. Quit picking on me, Pastor. Uh, the ancient historian Josephus, and uh, you've probably uh, heard that name before, it's in secular history, uh, the, a Jewish historian well known after the time of Jesus, and he stated of Nimrod, and he's quoting now, where is he quoting from? Not from the Bible, but he's quoting from the Antiquities of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 4. There are other historical resources that are legitimate and uh, have value. They're not inspired. They don't hold the same weight that God's Word does. God's Word is from God. When it says God's Word, it's basically His voice. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. These other books uh, might uh, have facts that align themselves with history and the truths of of, of, of Christianity and Judaism, but they're not equal to it. Just rem remember that. And so that's from that book. And Josephus said of Nimrod from this book, he also said that he would be revenged of God if he should have a mind to drown the world again. So he's building this tower again so high that if this is from this particular book, and so high that if God were to reign on this planet again, that this tower would be so high that uh, it would be too high for the water to reach. So that he would build a tower too high for the waters to be able to reach it, and that he would avenge himself on God for destroying their forefathers. The first thought that comes to mind as I'm uh, hearing this from Josephus and when he's saying about Nimrod, and it may or may not be true, Whereas in the Word of God, we do know that what we read about uh, Nimrod and the Tower of Babel is true. We know that for a fact. But it's interesting and it's conceivable that Nimrod may have thought those things. And, uh, but notice what he says, God for destroying their forefathers. And the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, we have Noah, and we have Shem, Ham, and Shepeth, or Japheth. And we've got their wives. And we're thinking, this just... Uh, a couple hundred years, uh, uh, three, four hundred, you four hundred years, and now all of a sudden, you've got out of this family people that are rebelling against God again, and He's calling them their forefathers. Well, I thought the seed of uh, Noah were, was 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 good and righteous, and 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 to an extent it, they were, but they had privileged sanctification. That was because it says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So it was him and his family that was set apart. Well, it was the same with Lot. When Lot was in the Sodom and Gomorrah, God says I, through the angel, uh, I cannot destroy this city until you are out of it. That is the righteous ones. But still, there was still the, the, the sin of the flesh that they took with them, and that's exactly what happened here. Um, so the descendants of Noah, uh, as they multiplied, it was like Adam and uh, Eve, right? They are born into this world in sin, shapened in iniquity, David says of, his, of himself. And that's you and I, when we were born into this world, we were born in sin. And we're very aware of that. And uh, so... However, God knew their hearts in Genesis chapter 11, verses 8 through 9 states. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. I want you to think about this. Uh, imagine, I know it's kind of funny, I mean, here a little man is going to say, look at what I'm going to do. Um, they stopped building the city, he scattered them. We'll see how in just a moment. But um, isn't it interesting here that uh, uh, mankind continues to uh, repeat their failures. This happened before uh, Noah, 
And now it's happening again in the time of Nimrod, and now it's happening again. Again and again and again. It repeats it. History repeats itself. And so that's why it's called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. Some people say, well, this, this, is, this is a mythology, this is, this is a story that they got to explain the different uh, languages. Well, let them think that. But you know, the precise languages of all of the world, the hundreds of languages, precise and specific and so forth, sounds like there would have to be some kind of a design to it. And of course, this is exactly what God says happened. And it says, And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad the face of the earth. That's exactly what happened. And by the way, history will take it back. And you can go into the uh, museums in uh, Russia. Uh, Dr. David, uh, John Barnett, Dr. John Barnett, has been in those museums. And it takes them back to Gog and Magog and back to the book of Genesis and how Ham, Shem, and Japheth and their descendants actually happened. So, many individuals, kingdoms, since then have tried to establish themselves as rulers. We're aware of that. I mean, we could uh, go on and on besides Nebuchadnezzar, besides King Darius and King Cyrus of the medieval Persian Empire, first Darius and then Alexander the Great. And then you, you can go from there on down to Antiochus Epiphanes, who was a type of the Antichrist, conquering the world, one of, one of the four generals uh, that had uh, uh, split apart from Alexander the Great. Uh, but then you've got, in, in, in the more modern world, but still ancient, Genghis Khan in his kingdom, and then you've got Julius Caesar in his kingdom, and you've got all of the others, Adolf uh, Hitler and he, his desired kingdom. And so, Rulers all over have tried to establish themselves over all of mankind, but it hasn't been possible over the entire earth until, until these last days. Isn't it exciting to be alive in this day? And somebody says, well, maybe I'd like to live in a more peaceful, more quieter time, a place where I could maybe uh, enjoy my grandchildren and maybe my great-grandchildren. You know, sure, we could think about those things. And, you know, we've been spoiled in America, haven't we? But we don't, uh, we're grasping, at least in this church, uh, the, the, the potency, the purpose, the will of God for the church is to be witnesses, not for this kingdom, but for His kingdom. And so, you know, as, as few or as many as we are, and we've seen that the, Jesus Christ used 12 people to turn the world upside down, 12 disciples who became apostles and turned the world upside down. Uh, we've seen other individuals that have uh, immensely affected the world throughout Scripture and, of course, even in our day. Uh, but now we have the Internet and personal Internet accessible phones. It's crazy that you could go to all the parts of the world and even the tribes that still are uh, using bows and arrows and spears are also able to get these phones. And, of course, the world, that's the, that's, that's the intent of the world. So, listen, they have tracking devices. Is that going to stop you from using the phone? I don't think so. You know, I mean, look at all the values that it is for us to have that. And I think of that sometimes when uh, so often Sam Kalwala in India calls me on the phone. Who's this? <laughs> Pastor Sam. You know, or uh, Sav Kesa, or, or uh, I, we talked uh, recent. I talked recently with uh, uh, missionary Carol Shake. Does that name ring a bell? In Turkey. Uh, so now you've got the capability through the internet and and, and through these large internet uh, companies in order to know where you are at at all times and your history. Are you going to go off and live in the woods? Some people are trying to do that. Listen, 
the violence that is being instilled in people's hearts uh, are allowing them to go and do violent things to people and to, and to defund the police. All of these are fitting together. There is a plan for this. And, you know, you better be totally armed because you're going to be faced out in the woods and there'll be no one to help you. And uh, the only one that can help us is God. And don't be fearful. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Don't fear, for I am with thee. And in the comforting uh, words of the 23rd Psalm, what does it tell us? Even though I walk through the valley of death. And how many times have we done that? The older you get. Many times. And I'm talking about today, if you're somewhere where God has called you to go, and I'm not even going to mention those missionaries' names, that you're willing to go. And you know that, humanly speaking, that your life could be required of you. You're very aware of that, yet you have a joy to go. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I'm not going to fear. There's only one reason. And I'm going to put it this way, because you are with me. Can you look up and say that? Because you are with me. Because God is with me. God wants us to know that. And then he goes on, he said, Thy rod and thy staff. You know, if your shepherd has a rod and a staff, it doesn't matter what kind of animal you are, you're not going to get past that, that trained shepherd. And you will be protected. Listen, with God's, if, if we know that, if we understand that, that uh, I, I like what Dr. David D. Allen used to say, the Calvary Baptist of Hazel Park, he says, if you're in the will of God, they can, if they come after you, they can't kill you with a hammer. I heard uh, recently in the news the past, this past year of a lady that was um, in one of these large cities and she was either coming out of her house or into her house and, and somebody came in there and they had a hammer and they hit her in the head and other places 13 times. Well, I just bring that up. Listen, God is going to protect us. I think she lived. Might have been a Christian. I don't know. But... God is with me. And always remember that. He's got a rod and he's got a staff and Satan himself can't come up against us. And 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you know I always use James chapter 4, 6 through 8, right? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Draw near unto God. He's going to draw near unto you. Draw near in prayer time. Don't distance yourself. When you are going through something in the stress and the trouble, a Christian has the access to God when we fall on our knees, in our heart, before our Savior. He's always with us. The Holy Spirit's always with us, isn't He? And so those are the times that we're living in and uh, a world-governing society. We're not going to stop it. And that, God doesn't tell us to stop it. Let's, let's, let's take our hands. No, but we pray for those in authority over us. But in the meantime, there's one thing we have to do, and that's uh, uh, Matthew 5.16. Matthew 5.16, what does it say? Let your light so shine before men that they may see with their eyes your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Good works, living for the Lord, being obedient to Christ, to God, and letting His light shine in us. All right. Um, I don't want to go too long. What time is it? 8.05, Oh. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty late. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more, though, uh, from the, about the day and age of true lip. We're talking about, in Revelation chapter 17 and chapter 18, about mystery Babylon. It all goes back to Babel. Men that want to control the world for themselves. But it also goes back to Nebuchadnezzar and it also goes back to Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2, I want to read it uh, briefly. I'll try to go through it quickly. 
Psalm chapter 2 is the day and age in which we live, and yet it was written by David um, thousands of years ago, 3,000 years ago, by David. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Let's see how, let's see how the Bible puts it. This is the day which we're living in right now. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. What are we seeing? The World Economic Forum. The World Health Organization. What are we seeing? World leaders coming together up over climate change, over the one world religion, COP27. Uh, That's what they call it. And the Great Reset. And so they come together. That's what the Bible says. It's going to happen. It's happening. Against the Lord they take counsel. Against His anointed. They're talking Lord here, capital L-O-R-D. That means Yahweh. That's God the Father. And it says against His anointed. Who is His anointed? Jesus Christ. Saying, let us break their bands asunder. So they're thinking, well, they used to have bands on us or chains and they used to make us follow their laws and their rules, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And so they're saying, we don't need that. Uh, let us break their bands of sun or cast away their cords from us. You know, whether it's, it's, it's ropes or some types of cords. I always look at it as that they realize it's their umbilical cords. That's how I look at it. You know, uh, yeah, we come from you. Yeah, we're created in your image. But we're removing that connection, that bond, physical or spiritual, whatever. And what does God do when, when they listen, your little child, if you've raised a little child, your little child, let's say one, two, three years old, shakes their fist at you and said, I don't need you, what are you gonna do? You're gonna laugh at them. You love them, but you're gonna laugh at them. Well, this is that picture, isn't it? He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. I will not be doing. No. The Lord shall have them in derision. What is derision? Mockery. Absurdity. Then verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them. How? In his wrath. Now that's the chapter that we just uh, came out of. The, the seven vials of wrath. The seven bowls of wrath. He's going to pour those out. People aren't going to be able to last very long. When he's pouring out those. This is towards the end of the tribulation period. We learned that last time. Last four lessons on the wrath of God being poured out in Revelation chapter 16. He shall speak to them in his wrath. He shall vex them. That is, cause distress to them in his sore displeasure. You know what the Bible says? He said, everybody thinks, well, God is love. Yes, he is, but turn the coin. He's also holy and just. And he hates sin. God is angry at the wicked every day. All the uh, wicked shall be turned into hell. Yeah. And all the nations that forget God. The Bible says that. And he says, in his sore displeasure. Three more verses. Four more. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill Zion. Mount Zion. That's his city there is Jerusalem. And Mount Zion. And I've set my king there, and Jesus is going to rule for millennium. Where do you find that? You're going to look in uh, Psalm, I mean Revelation chapter 20, starting in verse uh, 3 and, and 4, and, and going on through the chapter to verse 10. Jesus is going to rule there in all the Old Testament. And so he says, I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree, the Lord... Yahweh hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And listen, God will give all to his son. This is the time that God is going to give everything to his son. What does he say in verse 8? Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen. Ask me. For thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And he's going to do that. Everything is going to be Christ. And Christ will be ruling. And then when we get into chapter 21, into chapter 22, 
the Father will be there, Christ will be there, the Holy Spirit will be there, but it seems evident the only one that has a face is going to be Jesus. Because now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Book of Timothy tells us. Now listen, God will bring judgment, not only giving Christ all that he desires, which it will be the world and everything in it, but he's going to bring judgment at that point upon the heathen. And, and that's where we have talked about many times in the book of Revelation, the earth dwellers. You're either of the earth, earthy, and that's it, or you're of the Lord spiritual. And the only way you can get of the Lord spiritual is if you get saved then you are safe. Let's get our relatives saved. Let's get our loved ones saved. Let's go to the highways and the byways and share the gospel so that all may enter in. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. All should come to... It's what the Bible says. And if we refuse, it's not His fault. Verse 9 says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. When's the last time, boy, you dropped a, 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 a clay pot on, on, the, on, the, on the cement or on the floor, and boy, it just shattered, and you thought, oh, no, no. Tony's coffee. This is the picture. Yeah, Tony's coffee. I, I was there when you did that. And I said, oh, no. You got big trouble. You're in trouble. Well, listen, that is the picture that we're looking at is God smashing those the, the, that rebel against Him. That's how far they're going to get in pieces. Verse uh, um, uh, 10. Watch this. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Verse 11. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you don't know the ABCs about anything worth knowing. And then the last one. And isn't it amazing that um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, boy, they confuse uh, the Scriptures, don't they? Here's a perfect example of God the Father and God the Son. And in this connection here, Look at what it says in verse 12. Kiss the Son. He's already talking about His Son. You know, um, we know that uh, uh, throughout this chapter it's all about Jesus Christ. In fact, throughout the whole Bible it's about getting uh, the, the, the family of God united with His Son as the uh, bride and Christ as the groom. It says, kiss the son lest he be angry and lest you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a, but a little. So what do we have to do? Kiss the son. Jesus Christ. Blessed are all that put their trust in him. Sounds like a New Testament verse. Does In fact, this whole chapter. It is. It was written in the Old Testament thousands of years ago but it could be placed as a New Testament verse. In fact, it's what is happening right now. And the message is, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, listen, the coming of the Lord uh, draweth nigh, near. Are you ready? Are you ready? And if nothing else should cause us to fear, the, the fear of what God says here from His mouth in through David and concerning prophecy that we see this is exactly what is happening should cause us to tremble but that's in order that we might repent and only the Holy Spirit can convict us pray that the Holy Spirit will convict your heart so that you can find true repentance in order that you might place your trust in Jesus Christ his finished gift of Cal at Calvary to save you. That's the only thing. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. But behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That's our message. And so to the highways and the byways, and that's all we're living for. And we rejoice to be His ambassadors. The highest, an ambassador is the highest calling of a representative from a country that represents that 
that kingdom or that power. We are, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God, and we thank you as we're coming here. We can see that throughout all of the ages, all the way back from uh, Noah, back to uh, his three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and then to uh, Nimrod, one of their descendants that uh, began the, the Tower of Babel, which is the, the same beginning of Babylon, the same Shinar, the city of Shinar, right there. And uh, our, our, our history goes back, but how did this enlightens us concerning the day in which we live. It's exactly what is going to happen. It's exactly what was prophesied. So anyone listening in, gracious Father, we pray, convict their hearts. Even those that would consider in the tape, uh, does this uh, align with our rules? That what's far more important than that is, uh, does my does God's Holy am I allowing God's Holy Spirit to convict my heart that I might not be lost eternally? So let your word go forward and thank you, Father, for this privilege that those that are here tonight have this privilege to be able to hear this and that the light is on at this church and through your word we love you and praise you and that many might come to Christ as Lord and Savior before it's too late. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.